Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here and in this video we will be talking about the regulation of glycolysis. In our previous videos we have in detail explained and we have gone through the metabolic pathways of glycolysis, what are the steps and what are the fates of pyruvate and such as like anaerobic glycolysis and how many ATPs are producing. So after this and in this video we will be talking about regulation of glycolysis. So glycolysis is regulated at three irreversible steps. So total 10 steps are there in glycolysis. Out of these 10 steps, three steps are irreversible. That is first, third and tenth step. Okay. So the first step is uh, mediated by the enzyme. That means conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate by the enzyme hexokinase or glucokinase. Okay, and the second step that is phosphofructokinase 1, otherwise it is known as PFK1. Here, fructose 6-phosphate converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Here the enzyme is phosphofructokinase 1, right. And the tenth step that is mediated by the enzyme pyruvate kinase where phosphoenol pyruvate converted to pyruvate. So out of the total 10 steps, how many steps are the glycolysis? 10 steps are there. Out of 10 steps, 3 steps are irreversible. 3 steps are irreversible. And rest of the steps are reversible. So that means these 3 irreversible steps regulates the glycolysis. So in this diagrammatic representation, you can make out here how the sequential conversion of glucose to uh, pyruvate see here and the activators and the inhibitors of glycolysis okay here different colors are used and the green color things which are promoting the glycolysis and red color which are inhibiting the glycolysis so there are two phases okay in every cell there are two phases well-fed state and starvation state okay so glycolysis is what glycolysis is means when there is a glucose okay to produce energy the glycolysis will take place okay and that is it is happening in case of like well-fed state okay whatever the food we are eating it will digestion ad absorption and it will go to cell and undergo glycolysis to produce atp okay in like well-fed state what happened like uh, glycolysis keep on takes place and to produce a atp and in starvation what happened there is no energy at all okay and there is no glucose only then how come glycolysis will take place so glycolysis has to stop at a point okay the things which stop glycolysis okay in case of starvation right insulin so first step that means glucokinase or hexokinase okay the first step window what are all the factors will be activating or promoting okay this glucokinase or hexokinase enzyme insulin which conditions insulin will be excreted when there is excess of glucose in the circulation when it is entering the cell there insulin will be released from getting released from the pancreas and it activates the first step of the enzyme that is glucokinase or hexokinase same time glucagon glucagon is uh, the difference between insulin and glucagon insulin is a hypoglycemic hormone that means if you are if you are having high glucose levels it will get back those high glucose levels to normal level okay that's why it is known that means it is decreasing the glucose level so that's why it is known as hypoglycemic hormone in case of glucone uh, glucagon that is an hyperglycemic hormone that means when you don't have glucose okay so this glucagon will come into the action and it produces glucoses and bring back the lower below normal level glucose into normal level of the glucose level. So both are antagonists. Okay, insulin is promoting the glycolysis and glucagon decreases the glycolysis. Okay, and at the same time the first step product, okay, the first step product that is glucose 6-phosphate, okay, it will inhibit, okay, if in case there is excess of ATP, there is no need of glycolysis again. So this glucose 6-phosphate like feedback mechanism, okay, it will inhibit hexokinase and stops the glycolysis, right. And in case of fructose 6-phosphate, the third step, okay, forget about like uh, uh, what is that uh, glucose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1 6 phosphate Here the stimulators are the uh, promoters of uh, this enzyme, they are fructose 6-phosphate again fructose 2 6 phosphate they are positive mo modulators of this step okay and when you are having I mean like uh, citrate or glucagon they are the strong inhibitor of this step okay they are the strong inhibitors of this step 
okay and this step is regular uh, mediated by the enzyme phosphofructokinase phosphofructokinase okay and this phosphofructokinase again inhibited by high levels of atp that means you are having high atp means sophisticated amount of energy you are having okay for the no need of production of atp so this produced atp will stop the glycolysis by inhibiting or by acting on pfk to stop the glycolysis okay and amp amp indicates decreased levels of uh, decreased energy status okay that means your exhausted levels of atp right so atp converted to adp and then amp so amp is a sign for decreased level status of energy right so how they are working all these are working as allosteric inhibitors okay for pfk phosphofructokinase 1 these all substances acting via allosteric inhibition okay so now so the last step that, that, that is 10th step where pyruvate kinase will be again promoted by insulin inhibited by glucagon again promoted by atp okay again inhibited by alanine okay and this step uh, pyruvate kinase okay in case you see the uh, thing atp with a high energy levels it will be inhibiting and uh, promoting and low levels of like uh, what to say alanine okay they are like inhibiting the pyruvate kinase so they are also working as allosteric inhibition so this is totally different in case of liver what are all the factors coming to the action and uh, inhibit and promote uh, the pathway and in case of skeletal muscles so here two colors i have uh, showed you one is in gray color and other is in green color okay and the green color part in liver liver the total mechanism is different in skeletal muscles the total mechanism is different because in liver at, at one point glycolysis has to stop okay but in skeletal muscles because of the continuation contraction of muscles uh, continuous requirement of energy so glycolysis need not to stop so it has to go on right so that's why the inhibitors and promoters will vary in case of liver cells and in case of skeletal muscles so now we'll see one by one okay the mechanisms how they are working so mainly uh, out of this phosphofructokinase okay that means where fructose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and mediated by the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1 here we said fructose 2 6 bisphosphate okay how it will be forming fructose 6 phosphate where uh, atp is coming and acting as uh, i mean like adding a uh, phosphate group and forms fructose 2 6 bisphosphate and fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is a positive um, modifier or positive modulator of phosphofructokinase to increase the rate of reaction of glycolysis rate of reaction of glycolysis here what to say in production of this there is an enzyme that is known as uh, phosphofructokinase 2 okay phosphofructokinase 2 or fructose bisphosphatase okay it is a bifunctional enzyme okay in making of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate there is a need of enzyme that is phosphofructokinase 2 okay where the addition of phosphate group to fructose 6 phosphate and the speciality of this phosphofructokinase 2 is it is a bifunctional enzyme or dimer okay that means it will be activated in case of dephosphorylated state okay this enzyme is activated in dephosphorylated state and i will discuss how it will be activated so two conditions in our body one is well-fed state and in starvation in well-fed state what happened well-fed state high levels of glucose will be there so this high concentration of glucose activates pancreas and which releases insulin so this insulin what it will do it again increases the production of the uh, a substance called to say protein phosphatase protein phosphatase okay what it will do it dephosphorylates this bifunctional enzyme and converted into activated one inactivated that means here this bifunctional enzyme inactivated in phosphorylated state so when it will be dephosphorylated it will be converted into active state so phosphofructokinase 2 is having a kinase action okay and fructose bisphosphatase will be having phosphatase action right so in case glucagon as it increasing the production of uh, protein phosphatase this protein phosphatase dephosphorylates the bifunctional enzyme and activates it and this phosphofructokinase 2 increases the production of fructose 6 phosphate 2 6 bisphosphate and this again further stimulate the synthesis of phosphofructokinase and stimulates it phosphofructokinase to form more fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and increase glycolysis okay 
So now you can uh, have a doubt. So in case of uh, starvation, what is happening? There, glucagon will come into the action if there is no glucose at all. This glucagon increases uh, one protein called protein kinase A. The protein kinase A, which add phosphate groups to it. Okay, which add phosphate groups to it. Okay, and it inhibits uh, fructose 26 bisphosphate formation. Okay, it inhibits fructose 26 bisphosphate uh, formation so that indirectly it is inhibiting. There is no fructose 26 bisphosphate. It is indirectly inhibiting phosphofructokinase. And what happened finally? There is a decrease of glycolysis because there is absolute requirement of glucose to synthesize, not glycolysis to go forward. Right, and coming to the third one, that is uh, regulation of liver pyruvate kinase. Okay, so this is also similar to uh, phosphofructokinase 2 it's like a dimer enzyme okay dimer or bifunctional uh, enzyme here bifunctional i mean this is not a bifunctional it is a dimer actually too to say it is inactive pyruvate kinase will be phosphorylated and active pyruvate kinase will be dephosphorylated so insulin we are all aware it uh, increases the synthesis of protein phosphatase so which dephosphorylates the pyruvate kinase and converts into active and go glycolysis to go ahead and in case of glucagon what happened it phosphorylates it and inactivates pyruvate kinase to stop the glycolysis okay this is the mechanism you see here high blood glucose level there is a decrease in uh, glucagon concentration so insulin automatically so it uh, dephosphorylates so in case of low glu glucagon level automatically this pyruvate kinase will be dephosphorylated and it converted to active pyruvate in case of low blood glucose level increased glucagon which phosphorylated converted into inactive pyruvate kinase so this way all the three steps in glycolysis are regulated so coming to the significance of glycolysis glycolysis is the principal route of glucose uh, to convert into other metabolic products along with the production of atp molecules and glycolysis which is also provide atp in absence of oxygen that allows tissues to survive and anorexic episodes okay and in erythrocytes, glycolysis is the sole source for energy production. Along with that, it is able to produce 2,3 BPG, that means 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate, which is required for transport of oxygen by hemoglobin. So, this thing we have already studied in hemoglobin chemistry how 2,3 BPG uh, favors the uh, unloading and loading of oxygen at tissue level. Okay, so that is the advantage of glycolysis. So, what are the things we'll be producing here? Okay, uh, to say what are the precursors? Pyruvate is the ultimate end product of glycolysis okay and from which it will be converted into alanine via transamination and pyruvate is also producing acetyl coa okay for fatty acid biosynthesis and glycerol 3 phosphate required for triacylglycerol derived from glycolysis so these are all the precursors precursors you will be getting from glycolysis one is alanine via transamination for protein synthesis okay that means synthesis of non essential amino acid and then uh, acetyl coa which is a starting substance for fatty acid synthesis and glycerol 3 phosphate again for synthesis of triacyl glycerol uh, which is uh, required uh, uh, which is coming from the glycolysis so it is also provide the pathway of metabolism of fructose and galactose derived from the diet and in mammals glucose is the only fuel that the brain use under non starvation conditions and the only fuel that red blood cells can use at all so coming to the energetics so we have already discussed in our previous videos about the energetics of anaerobic glycolysis but to talk about aerobic glycolysis in a, in presence of oxygen so the net reaction of aerobic glycolysis glucose of two pyruvates that means one glucose having six carbons so finally it is producing two molecules of pyruvate right so in middle 2 NADH will be produced and uh, 2 sets of ATPs so total 4 ATPs 2 NADH 1 NADH is giving you once it 1 NADH entering into electron transport chain giving you 3 ATPs so uh, 2 into 3 6 ATPs so again already you are having 4 ATPs via substrate uh, level phosphorylation so 10 ATPs so out of this 10, 2 you have already invested in the starting. Okay. So here, so 10 minus 2. So net production will be 8 ATPs. So and this calculation is also varies. So 
as per the old calculation old atp calculation i have uh, mentioned here as per the new calculation 1 nadh is equal to 2.5 atps okay so both are correct okay if you are mentioning about new calculation so mention 2.5 if you are mentioning about old calculation mention 1 nadh is giving you 3 atps so according to the old calculation net atp production of, of a aerobic glycolysis is 8 atps and for the new calculation okay the net production of atps will be 7 okay the net gain of atps will be 7 both are correct but make sure on which calculation you are going new calculation or old calculation so as i mentioned in case of anaerobic glycolysis only two atps will be produced so that's all about uh, regulation of glycolysis and uh, energetics of uh, aerobic glycolysis thanks for listening thank you